Welcome back to all of you who watched my first video and hello to everyone who's the first time on this channel. Bist du bereit für den nächsten Schritt? Is the question of the day, are you ready for the next step? So with any further ado, let's get straight into the unboxing and open this puppy up. Et voila, there you go. We receive another box and a little postcard from Kurex. Well, let's have a look what they're actually messaging me. Hello from Hamburg, thank you very much for your order. We wish you a lot of fun and a lot of success with your new Kurex, your Kurex team. Thank you very much for that kind message. But let's have actually a look what's inside the box. There we go. I ordered them in a size L. They sent me back about 50 euros, but it's actually best you just go straight to their website. They have like various different kinds of insults for whatever sport you're doing and they have it in different sizes. So they actually have something for you to make it fit. Once you figured out which sport you like, they actually have a two-way system in place on how to figure out which sole you need because they have like three different types, the high, medium and the low profile. And therefore you need to identify the shape of your foot or the shape of your sole, like if you have a tall arch or a low arch and actually your knee alignment is very, very important. For me, I went for a C2 because I have a very low arch but a straight knees. So I went for a medium profile shoe, which is the one you're seeing here. On the back of the box, we actually find their whole marketing speech, like heel stabilization, unbeaten comfort, airflow, comfort fit, anatomic support, and so on and so forth. There's nothing wrong with writing that on the box because that's actually what we as consumers are looking for when we are shopping for an aftermarket insole. But if you find the answers to your questions on the outside of a box, well, you have to decide for yourself, right? But however, I'm not to judge whether or not this insole is helping you. So we just move on, crack open this box and have a more in-depth look on what they're all about and how they're actually put together. Let's go. Right, let's have a closer look on how this insole is actually put together. You have a three layer design. There is a yellow top layer, which appears to be made of fabric and just carries the logo and the whole design. Then you have a black middle layer, which seems to be made of a synthetic foam and provides the most of the cushioning, um, so it appears. And then you have a bottom layer, which provides the shape or the mold for this whole insole, which uh, especially comes into play when looking at the heel area. Taking a closer look at the gray bottom layer, it is reinforced with this pinkish patch, which is trying to take some pressure off of the ball foot area. Then we have this black plastic mold in the middle, which is trying to support your arch. And lastly, we have this cushion in the heel area, which is probably there for when you're actually walking off the bike which you don't do that much anyway. Nevertheless, this area is really important for the fit of your foot into the insole and with that into the shoe. To wrap this whole section up, let's again take a close look how they actually glue together these three layers that we just spoke about. I think they did a pretty good job with that and I can say from like years of experience with their running specific soles that they are not coming apart, but let's compare those two. Right, let's get straight into the nitty gritty, which is the comparison of the bike specific Bike Pro insole with its running specific counterpart, Run Pro. As you can see, they made a few alterations to the colorway and the design they chose, but structurally, they are very, very similar. For example, they carried over the three layer design. The bottom layer is supported by these other three pieces like the patch, the arch stabilization and so on and so forth. And the changes you'd see are very, very minute and we have to take a closer look for that. Starting from the top, we can actually see the cut lines. They are the same pretty much. So if these insoles don't fit your shoes perfectly, you just can trim them down and make them fit perfectly. As you can see, I did that with the running specific over here. Moving on to the next specific difference, we are actually taking a look at the bottom layer of these insoles. One thing you realize straight away when just touching these insoles is 
that the bottom layer of the bike specific, like the gray insole, is much much firmer than its running specific counterpart, which makes sense if your foot is stuck in a cycling shoe with a hard carbon sole that is not flexing at all, you want even more stiffness and support. Whereas when you're running, your foot is actually constantly moving with every step, like you need flexibility. Therefore, it absolutely makes sense that they actually choose different strength for the bottom layer of the insoles. From there we are moving down to the heel section of the insole and there we have the first significant difference between these two insoles. When comparing the padding we can see that the running specific insole actually delivers a greater deal of suspension than its bike specific counterpart. This actually becomes very clear when looking at the thickness of the pads that are glued to the outer layer of the insole. Furthermore, we can observe that the shape of the insoles is designed in such a way that they are catering towards the knees of the different use scenarios. We see that the bike specific insole is far far flatter in the heel and arch area because most of the load will be in the ball and the toe area, like in the front of the foot. If this video helped you to make an informed decision or even a wise purchase, please drop a like, get subscribed, it helps tremendously and maybe we even see each other in the comment section. Have a good one, bye.